Lucy is this tool I bought two years ago and it sat on my shelf and when I was cleaning, it wasn't cleaning, I just stumbled across it when I was making more mess, but the Lucy drawing tool that I, that was mailed out in 2018 is one of the things I stumbled across and I remembered it and thought, that would be an interesting one to share with you guys and to experience. I've never tried it, but I remember seeing random like online ads that looked super cheesy and I bought what, you know what? Let's watch the cheesy ads before we open it. Lucy drawing tool. Most versatile camera lucida ever. Camera lucida. Camera lucida is an optical device used as a drawing aid by artists. It's like a mirror. So you're looking down with one eye you're drawing and the other eye is looking forward at what you're trying to draw. And apparently, as you can see by these old ass drawings on Wikipedia, the Lucy is the modernized drawing tool. The Lucy drawing tool, look at this. Let's watch this ad. Why don't we have better ways to help today's artists draw faster and better? She's so frustrating. Sure, you could painstakingly copy a photo with a grid if you like mind numbing monotony and accidental <laughs> cubism. <laughs> sure, you could copy it with a grid if you're a Dingus. This advertisement is like making me feel this big. You could trace in the dark with an overheating art projector if you're into nocturnal arts and crafts. You could trace in the dark with a projector if you're a dumbass. Or if you've always wanted to become a human copy machine, light boxes are great for tiny tracings. This if is so mean! This whole ad is like, if you really want to be a piece of sh you could draw in any number of other ways, but... <laughs> only there was a way to use the old master secrets to work faster and better from photos and not make you want to just give up and call it abstract art. I just want to give an award to this actress. She's amazing. Forget the whole art thing for a minute here and just appreciate the art of her performance. because I'm the knowledgeable disembodied narrator with all the answers, the Lucy drawing tool. <laughs> Place whatever you want to draw in front of you and look down into the view hole. You'll see your subject reflected over your paper or canvas. Draw around the image until you have a good sketch. Basically, what he's trying to say through all the sass is it's a, it's a way to trace. That's better than all the other ways of tracing. So I bought it and we're gonna put it to the test. I'm never gonna trace like a pleb ever again because I have the Lucy. That's all I need to know, full set. All right, this is the, uh, um, let's take it over to the drawing area. Let's get some drawing going. Obviously I can't really use this on my normal desk because it's a whole contraption and I need space. So we've got the clamp for the desk. We'll put this down here. And this is the mechanism. It's like a mirror on one side and it's a window on the other. Let's set it up. There's nothing more satisfying than doing this. <laughs> now I need something to draw with and something to draw. Let's start off with this guy. All right. That's pretty trippy. Interesting. In fact, at this point, I can start to show you what I'm seeing when I look through here. So when I look through here, there you go. See, you actually can see it. This is giving a, a reflection of my dude over there onto that weird mirror thingy and onto the paper. So let's just say, for argument's sake, here's, a, here's the head and it, I can't really see what I'm drawing because I've got the camera in front of the, the Lucy. When I've drawn those few lines, when I move around, which Keep in mind, like, look at how much I'm moving here. This is like, you know, millimeters. So I guess you have to stay really still. I don't think it's helping that my reference is far away. I actually feel like it's probably gonna be better if it's close. There we go. Okay, that seems a little better. And there's less movement too. But I'm just looking at his torso. Oh my God. I have to move him down. <sighs> Some setup required. <laughs> I think I've got it. After a lot of mucking around, how long has it been? It's been like two hours <laughs> getting ready. But that's actually a cool position and it does look cool. Let's, let's get stuck into this and we'll see if the Lucy is all she's cracked up to be. I don't have anything clever to say there. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> oh wait, wait, no, no, I can add, I can add. I've got one now. And then we'll see at the end of the day if I love Lucy. That was worth adding That was good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 
I'm pausing it. I'm going to call it the halfway mark. I've drawn as much as I can see. That is that is everything I see. Now it's going to be really hard to show you this, but I, I want to try because basically my problem is there's a plethora of detail. There's plenty of stuff to see geometrically, but when you look through here, there's really nothing there. It's basically the contrast between the light and the dark on the leftmost side of the character where the brightest highlights are. But yeah, it's really hard to see anything. The other issue is positioning. And as you can see, the drawing shifts around and drifts based on where my eye is. It's this weird balancing act of keeping my head perfectly still, sometimes resting like this thing on my eye so it doesn't move. And then if I get it right and I move to other areas of the illustration, I look back to where I initially drew and notice that I've drifted a little, that the lines that I first drew are a little bit out. So then I have to like realign myself to where I first drew and then go back to where I was. I have to keep recalibrating to the first area that I drew. It's a really inorganic way of doing this. I'm gonna persist. I'm gonna keep going until we get to the end. I'm gonna try and do some shading and stuff. But the problem is I can't see any. I'm just gonna work with what I see through this thing, because that's what this whole video is about. So I'm gonna shade based on the shading that I see here, might end up looking cool or creative or I don't know. <laughs> but we'll do that and then we'll try a few other things to see if there's an optimum way of using the Lucy. Before we actually look at what I've just drawn with it, I'm gonna try and do the same thing with two other methods of copying. One, just by eye, if I'm just looking at it and drawing, and then the other uh, with a photo. But what I'm gonna do is to keep it all on a level playing field, I'm going to do it in the same time frame. Then after I've copied it in two other ways, we'll have a look at those results and then we'll come back to the Lucy results and see if they hold up and if the discomfort has been in any way worth it in some sort of payoff. So the first of these two alternative methods of copying is just copying. I'm looking at what I'm drawing and I'm trying to draw it. Now, it's hard. This is the hardest method of copying. It's really hard to depict three-dimensional geometry on paper or even replicate something two-dimensional on a two-dimensional piece of paper because it's using your limited brain and capacity to reinterpret those shapes and proportions and put it down without any other reference. As hard as it is though, it is of course the, the best way of copying because if you get good at it, you don't need anything else and it is a fantastic training mechanism that helps your ability to understand and interpret and depict shapes and form that can apply and improve your artwork overall. So it's hard, but it's also the best. And though it is the method most prone to issues when it comes to proportion or accurate representation, it also can be the one that produces the most organic results because it uses your natural instincts and your style. And last but not least, the grid method. Now there are other ways of copying, but the grid is a really nice balance because it still leans on your ability to reference an original two-dimensional image. But basically wherever the intersecting points of the grid are, you have a really clear way to sort of anchor yourself uh, to help keep your proportions in line. Now obviously, the, the, at the end, you have to get rid of the grid if you want a really clean result. So one of the ways to do that is to just draw the grid really, really lightly and then draw the illustration with ink or a different medium. And then of course you can erase the, the line work underneath. But it's also a happy medium as far as learning how to copy things well because it utilizes that first one I demonstrated. You're just training your eye and your ability to interpret and redepict shapes and forms and stuff, but you also have something to lean on. 
Now, of course, I'm not demonstrating tracing or using a projector, which is what the Lucy is saying it, it can do better than those things at, but I thought I'd show you the most practical ways of copying, even though they are more prone to mistakes, they're also the most useful and can help your skills in all other artistic areas. But honestly, if you want to trace, and we'll keep exploring the Lucy after these, yeah, I think the spoiler is there are other easier ways to trace. <laughs> So we're going to go through the various methods of copying that I might normally go to and then we'll compare it to the Lucy. Starting off with the grid method, the first half of the grid method is the slightly awkward half because you're basically just like drawing lines and positioning uh, areas of geometry that you're referencing. But then the last half, and that's when you get to bring in your style and much more of an organic feeling. You find your flow and you just dive into it. So. Next, this is just by eye. This is me looking at my model here and just drawing it. Obviously, it, it, there's, there's less accuracy compared to my grid method illustration. Yeah, it's more cartoony. Yeah, it's a little more out of proportion, but I actually feel like it, it sort of has a little more heart. It sort of retains my personal style even more. So, you know, there are pros and cons to every method. And if I want to go uh, more realistic, obviously I'd go grid or a different method, or, or would I go with the Lucy. Well, let's see. Lu Lucy, let's see, is there something there? Lucy, how we did. All right, I'll do, that's not bad. <laughs> this is my Lucy. That's worse than I remember. <laughs> Even though I'm actually more directly tracing with the Lucy compared to my other attempts, it just looks different. It looks less like what I'm referencing. That may be that I am ineffectively uh, showing what I'm looking at through here. It may be that I need more light on the subject. It may be that having the black backing between me and what I'm looking at is not the way to do it. And I wanna just change some of the lighting and backing conditions of this thing to see what is effective, if anything is effective. All right, so the GoPro's in a pretty good place. Even now, look how shaky the, the eye hole of the Lucy is. Oh God, I need. To, I wanna cover that reflection too. Maybe we'll put some tape over it. So I'm gonna try and just block all reflections so we can do this as accurately as possible. And I might keep this bloody thing still. Okay, I think that's working for me. So I can see things pretty clearly. And you can see what I was trying to copy there. Okay, I think we're in a good spot now. All right, so I'm gonna turn this around so I can see over there. So at the moment I've got a pretty soft but dark and unintrusive lack panelling background like these charcoal panels. So is it clearer with white? Yes and no. That's interesting. It's clearer in terms of like where the edges in the dark area are but you have then the same problem with the lighter areas in that you can't necessarily see like if it's like a, a flat light then you, you're losing the contrast directly uh, against that side, but you get it back on the shadow side. So you have to be somewhere in the middle, I guess. I don't know. Maybe the lighting itself isn't strong enough. So we'll play around with that. So what is working for it and what isn't? Oh, okay. So strong light is all right. You can see some of the detail. That's pretty clear. That is a lot clearer. This is so convoluted. If I really blast light on this right side, which is in front of the black backdrop, and then I put a white backdrop in front of the shadowed side of the figure, that's the, gonna be the clearest reference. All right, we're still losing quite a lot of detail on the shadow side. Do you just light the whole thing super strong? Then that, then you have to copy something without any dynamic lighting. Oh my God, this is so dumb. And I mean, look at this. This is what we've got going to try and make this work. It's a lot. It's more than you should need to do. <laughs> but let's give it a go. I'm just <laughs> gonna see if it feels any better. I mean, it's clear to look at, but to draw, like as soon as I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. That is much clearer. There's much more depth, right? Optimize everything that pops out. But then I have to draw it. And I really don't want to, because it's not at all comfortable or enjoyable. 
I really don't want to use this again. I'm gonna call it. <laughs> I really do. Okay, that's my review. I hate it. To be honest, if I wanted a completely proportionate, accurate, photorealistic re-depiction of something in real life, I would do one of two things. I would use a light box or take a photo. Other than that, anything else is, well, you know. I don't think DaVinci used it, no matter what they tell you in the commercial. That is it for this video. I hope you found it interesting, if not amusing. I, I actually found it really quite thoroughly uh, fascinating to see the direct comparison uh, between those three versions of copying. So let me know in the comments which you think is most effective, or if you've ever used one of these things, and if there is a use I'm missing. That, uh, that I should hold on to it for or give it a go in another video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more fun with art and creativity and occasionally gimmicky art toys. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. And until I've said thank you for watching like four times, haven't I? I'm very grateful that you're watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.